Hey guys, welcome to the 2018 edition of the Spirited Away in Minecraft official tour. So it's been four years since I last did a tour of this place. So I figured since pretty much everything is completely different and changed and updated, I should probably do another tour, especially for those people who do not have the ability to visit the server and see how it looks. So this is where the movie starts, basically Chihiro and her parents are driving in their car to their new house since they are moving. This scene you don't really see these buildings at all even though they are all based on reference images from the reflections that you see in the car, from the background stitched together and everything. I think this school, you see it when she is sticking her tongue out the window and you see it in the reflection of the car window. These are billboards that you see on the side. There's a bunch of residential houses and a gas station. Nisek. Here's the Bridgestone. So here is basically the title sequence or title screen. The camera zooms up while they go up this road and you see the title Spirited Away right there. And you see all these houses. Each house is fully furnished. We used a lot of house tours, Japanese house tours, to get the layout of these houses correct to the Japanese culture. This right here is one of the few houses that I built. Here's the tatami room. So basically they are driving up this road to get to their house, and their house is right here. If you go in you can actually see their moving boxes, but basically they drive here stop their car right in front of this tree and they see their house but they don't know how to get to it so they decide to take a shortcut so they go through these woods and the mom and Chihiro are kind of getting worried because they're going so fast they bump over this stream here and then they see something in the distance and they have to put on their brakes and stop so they stop their car here in front of this creepy statue and the parents want to move forward, but Chihiro doesn't want to, but she has no choice but to follow along. So she follows them into this very dark room. I think I might have to turn off shaders in order to actually see the room, so. Okay, so this is kind of a train station waiting lobby that they find themselves in. They just walk out of it to this field and I guess I'll turn shaders back on cool so they walk out to this grassy field and basically they look back at what they just came out of and it's this giant building the, the dad says something about this being a part of an old amusement park that went out of business the wind kind of pulls them this way so they move up this path until they get to what we call the ghost town and this is a nice screenshot here they just go all the way up the next screenshot you see I'm gonna switch the the Sun direction real quick so they walk from down there all the way up here the dead starts to smell something, so they continue onward to this main area. So I keep switching shaders so that it looks uh, the best way that you can enjoy it as. So yeah, all these buildings are uniquely designed. Some of them are based on reference images, but a lot of them you don't even see in the movie, so they had to be just made up. But most of them are these food shops with lots of steam coming out the kitchens and right here is where Chihiro's parents decide to pig out before actually being turned into pigs so they look in here they don't see anyone around so they decide to just dig in we've got the the gross looking chickens and these dumplings here that they start swallowing Chihiro doesn't want to have any of that so she walks away and walks up these stairs 
And then once she gets there, she turns to her right and sees the magnificent bathhouse. And uh, it's not fully rendered. Okay, okay. She sees the magnificent bathhouse. And this is really the the main attraction of the Spirited Away world. We render this part out. So yeah, it's uh, gone through many phases. Basically, Chihiro looks down and sees the train below. In the movie, it's right below the bridge, but it doesn't make sense for it to be right below the bridge because it would go right through the middle of the bathhouse, so it's over there. And she looks down, sees the bridge, comes back up, sees Haku. Haku's standing, whoa. She sees Haku. Haku gets very surprised and angry that she's here. He says, you need to go. You need to go now. And it's starting to get dark. So Chihiro turns around and walks back down to the ghost town to find her parents. And now all the lights have been turned on. And there's all these black, transparent looking spirits walking around everywhere. She goes here to see her parents. Her parents have now become pigs. And she gets extremely freaked out and runs back this way all the way down until she gets to the field but now the field okay wait it hasn't happened yet the field oh yeah, here we go it's happening the field gets flooded with water as it gets dark this is a feature that we added and this once dark empty clock tower is now surrounded by all of these buildings so the clock tower itself lights up and all of these buildings are also here filled with stuff so yeah and then oh yep yeah, and here it is the boat the boat comes from from over there and empties out all of these spirits. They come out of the doors and start walking up these steps. So Chihiro is more and more freaked out. She even sees that she is starting to get see-through. So she runs off up this hill, past this little house, to this spot right here. She crouches in the corner right here. Haku comes from up here, coming down these stairs, and looks over, sees her, gives her a little pellet to keep her from getting too see-through, and then she stands up, and they run off. So they run through this village here. That's just basically a blur in the movie. So you don't actually see any of these buildings. But what you do see is this alleyway right here, looking down from the top. You see them kind of go down this way, and then you see them from this viewpoint going through this alleyway into this door that he opens with his magic. And they go down these stairs, past these black jars, past all this hanging meat, into this freezer. And then they go through the pig farm, where you see the pigs on either side. And they just run all the way through until you get to the bathhouse. So then you basically see the bathhouse from this angle. And you see that spirits are crossing this bridge to get inside. And so Chihiro and Haku come through this gate. I think I should light this up a little bit. So they come through this gate. The frogmen are sitting, they're standing here, welcoming all the guests. And so Chihiro has to hold her breath to not be seen by all the, the spirits. So she crosses, there's no face standing right there. But then when the frog comes and kind of catches them by surprise, she loses her breath and then everyone can see her. And so Haku just like dashes through this door 
into this garden. So they hide right here behind these bushes. Everyone's freaking out. And Haku gives her some instructions to go down, down this, ooh, this is really dark. Haku gives her instructions to go down these stairs all the way down to the boiler room down there. So she goes down really slowly and then eventually kind of trips and then face plants right against this wall. And then she looks up and sees there's a frog man smoking out this window. And she continues all the way down until we get to the boiler room, which is right here. And let me just kind of imitate that screenshot as best I can. It's about here. Then she goes in. And here we are in the boiler room. You can hear that constant humming sound that we added to make it sound like a boiler. And here is the boiler room. Kamaji is sitting up there on that stool thing. And you see the little cubby holes for where the soot balls come out. And the opening where they throw the coal in. Boiling water at the bottom. Little bath token that Kamaji exchanges for boiling water. And I believe if I press this button, the soot sprites will come out. And here they are. This is one of the cooler things that we've got going on. It's really funny how it seems like they're waiting for it to open and they always get it in. I mean, sometimes they don't get it in, but it's completely random. So Lynn comes out this door, which is automatic, and she agrees to take Chihiro up to Yubaba so that she can get a job. So they go this way. And here is the atrium. This is kind of the main central shaft where you can access just about everything. There's stairs and doorways and bridges everywhere. And it goes all the way to the top. But um, Chihiro follows Lin past all of these gears to this elevator, which is not working right now. It seems to be gone. But basically they, they take this elevator and they go up and then I believe they go up this way all the way until they come out this door and walk to this elevator. And I think this elevator works, so let's try it. Oh, this is exciting. So, all right. Oh yeah, we are going up. That's cool. So I think there's usually a radish spirit here, but I guess he's gone. But yeah, anyway, this is where they see the radish spirit and the radish spirit kind of follows them across this bridge. And this is where you see the first glimpse of the interior, which is pretty cool. These are all the baths, and we'll see those later. But they cross here till they get to this elevator, and this is where Lin has to kind of distract the frogman from finding out that Chihiro is there. But basically, uh, she goes up the elevator. They the door opens to this room or this area where there's a bunch of guests and they're all their sandals laid out, but they continue upwards until they get here, which is Yubaba's floor. And this is where she, the, the door knocker tells her that she's rude for not knocking. And so Yubaba says to come in. And the doors open and the lights turn on one by one and then yeah that's a <laughs> really cool feature um, she gets pulled through really forcefully all the way through these corridors and then makes a turn and then goes all the way through this hallway until she gets 
thrown onto the carpet of, oh, it's not nighttime anymore. She gets thrown onto this carpet. And so you see her at her office desk. And then here's the, the three heads that if you get close, actually <laughs> do that jump and roll. She basically signs her name away and gets taken by Haku to her dorm area. So let me just teleport there real quick. So this is the room where everyone's saying that she's a stinking human and we don't want to work with her. But Haku is very defensive and says you guys will get used to her. And so they put her with Lin and so they go to the women's dormitory where Lynn gives her some clothes. They go to sleep and the next scene actually happens in a different part of the building when the sun's starting to come up. So this is the upper atrium private balcony that Haku, you see him walking up this. I think the screenshot's right about here. And you see him walking all the way up to the top of the entire building, oops, where you see Yubaba turn into a bird and get sent off by these three heads and Haku, and she flies off into the distance. So now it is daytime, and Haku kind of tells Chihiro to meet her at the bridge to see her parents. So she basically goes all the way back down to the boiler room. So she looks for her shoes and the soot balls have her shoes. So she takes the shoes and goes out the door. Ooh, the water looks nice. And she goes up the way she came until she gets back here. And Taku is waiting for her right here. And they go through this garden area until they get to pig farm. So they descend down here and I believe they enter through this entrance. So Chihiro comes in and she sees all the pigs and she gets really emotional and so eventually they come back out here and they are munching on dumplings while Haku is kind of comforting her. Then they go back up and when she turns around at the bridge, she looks back and sees that Haku is like flying up there as a dragon. So then it starts to get dark again and that's when they go to work. So they, everyone gets dressed and they go, they go up these stairs. This is one of those screenshots. So they go up these stairs so they can go to work, which is like right here. I think there's like a area where they can take their employee tokens off the shelf or something like that. Yeah, these things. And now they have to get to work cleaning the floors. So let's see. They're laying out these these cushions and then Chihiro is emptying out the water out here and then she sees no face. So she sees no face out here and then basically lets him in by leaving the door open. And then they get to work on cleaning this bath. So this is the main bath area and that's the place where they get their bath tokens. And each of these areas have their own bathtubs. And this leather releases the water. So this thing comes out, water comes down, fills it up, and you can make it go back in also. Yep. Then that whole stink spirit scene happens where they serve the, the stink spirit. Everyone's kind of watching from afar. Yubaba's like up here and uh, everything is just getting really muddy and dirty she sees that there's like a, a lot of trash inside of him so they all work to pull it out the stink spirit turns into a river spirit and thanks her gives her one of those medicine ball things and flies out of this door to the outside world 
So then they all go to sleep, and then the next morning, when they would usually all still be asleep, Chihiro wakes up in her bed and sees that everyone is already up. And so she goes outside, sees that the the boiler thing is already uh, going, and then she sees that Haku is getting attacked by little paper birds. And so this is a... Uh, this is Haku getting attacked by paper birds. So Haku gets led into this room and then flies out all the way up to the top. And so she realizes she needs to go up there and save him. So, so she goes up these stairs. So this is where No Face, the new guest, comes up the stairs, and he's huge, and, and all the workers are on either side with their donation boxes, and No Face comes here, and Chihiro comes out, No Face gives her a lot of gold, but she rejects it, and then No Face eats two people, and then everyone freaks out, and Chihiro moves on to try to get upstairs. So this is the window that Chihiro goes out of. She just pops out. Oops. She just falls out here, bravely crosses this pipe, which in this case is a bit thicker, but she crosses this pipe, and the pipe kind of breaks, and she goes up this ladder all the way until she enters this bathroom. So this is Yubaba's bathroom, and there's a mirror here, which is an exact reflection. But, of course, it is just a copy of the room on the other side. So she goes through this other mirror hallway and ends up in Baby's room. And if you didn't notice, there were a bunch of teleport commands to send us two stories up in order to make this accurate. So she goes into Baby's room, and I believe there is a working light switch here. Yep, everything is now dark. And, uh, hang on. And yeah, now you can see the darkness. And let's turn it back on. Yep, that's pretty cool. So, I don't know why my head's here. Uh, she's basically hiding inside these pillows, and the baby is inside here, and Yubaba comes out, Chihiro runs out while Yubaba's not looking, and finds Haku on the carpet here. If you go up to this carpet, it actually rolls up, and you can see that there is a hole that goes all the way down to the bottom. So after the little paper bird that's been following Chihiro around turns all the creatures into other creatures, she falls down here with Haku all the way down. So let's go. Woo! And here we are in the kind of underworld. Let me make it a little bit brighter. This is the underworld where there's a lot of spirits. So she and Haku fly all the way back up into this hole, it says, to the boiler room. And they go all the way down until they crash land back into the boiler room. And then Kamaji gives Chihiro some tickets to go to lift the curse and return the seal back to Zeniva. And so first, Chihiro has to go calm down No Face, so she goes upstairs. So basically, we go down this hallway, and the halls are lined with people with food ready to serve No Face, and he's causing a big ruckus. Chihiro shows up, and then they put her in this room alone with No Face, and there he is. You can see his mouth, and his legs, and his food everywhere. So then she gives him the medicine ball, he throws up, starts chasing her, and chases her all the way back out this way. And they go down a bunch of stairs. I think actually he climbs down 
to catch her. And they go down. They go down this stairway. And then 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 finally crashes against this elevator thing. And that is when No Face throws up the two people that he ate and continues onward this way through this kitchen. And so you see them going through this kitchen. He follows her outside. And so they go outside. Chihiro goes all the way down to where the boat is and looks like this is the boat. I haven't seen this before. And No Face falls down that pipe and swims after. But eventually they get to the train. So yeah, we've got a fancy system that plays a song while you while you ride the, the minecart, so I guess I'd better There's something wrong about that. Alright, <laughs> so yeah, then they go to the train, and we've got a bunch of fancy signs here. You can get a minecart here, and we've set up a system where if you ride a minecart and turn off all sounds except jukebox and note box, you'll actually hear the main theme of the movie. Sounds pretty okay. I like how it sounds. Yeah, so here we are passing this or passing this section right here where there's like a child and their and her father standing there. I think at some point you see the island. Here it is. You see this island here passing by like that. I think I abandoned my minecart, so I'll have to but yeah, this is where you see the train station that the, the train stops at. Eventually they make it to the swamp, so I'll have to make it start to get dark here. So yeah, starting to enter the swamp area. So before we get to the swamp, we actually have one cutscene where we see Yubaba sitting at this chair in her kitchen and the baby is eating chocolates here and the head workers are sitting here kind of looks like this and then haku comes from this side of the room and comes in and tells yubaba that something has been taken from her and she realizes that baby is not baby and baby is actually missing so she goes crazy heads back to baby's room looks for baby can't find baby and then Haku says something like, we'll give you baby back if you set Chihiro and her parents free. And so she agrees to do it on the condition that she can give Chihiro one final test. And so now we go back to the swamp. And here we are at the swamp. I think I'll have to render out some chunks first. Okay, so the train stops here. And they make their way into the swamp where Zeniba lives. And we're about to find out right now if the lantern's working. Oh, I think it is. Here comes the lantern. I don't know if it lights up anymore, but I do believe it is going to lead us to Zeniba. Great. So the lantern will bow to us and then lead us all the way through the swamp until we reach the cottage. All right, so here we are at Zeniba's cottage and the lantern sets itself up right there and we go in and here is Zeniba's cottage. 
So this is where Chihiro gives back the seal. The little rat and bird are told that they can change back if they want, but they choose not to. They use this little spindle to make a little hair tie for Chihiro, and then they hear a, like some wind, and when they go back outside, Haku is here. Whoa! Actually, I wasn't expecting that, so uh, yeah, this is our animated version of Haku. That appears if you exit the door. Didn't think it would work for some reason. Uh, and then Chihiro rides Haku all the way back to the bathhouse. And by the time they get there, it's daytime. So here's one of the screenshots that you see in this spot. And this is where they set up the pigs so that Chihiro can choose which one is her parents. And she decides that none of them are. And then she's correct and she's free and she runs back with Haku all the way back to the spot and this is where Haku and Chihiro last say goodbye and she runs back and her parents are right there as if she would never left them they go back to where their car is and then she turns around one last time to look back through the empty doorway and then they drive off and that's the end of the movie so hope you enjoyed the tour and if you are interested in seeing this yourself and you have minecraft you can visit our server link is in the description and special thanks to all the people that contributed their building abilities to this world if you'd like to apply to become a builder yourself you can click the link in the description. So next I plan to do a tour of Totoro, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.